Good morning, squad. <clears throat> Hello. How are you all today? We are day 354. I believe that's correct. I believe I made sure I actually did update everything. Yes, okay, I did. I accidentally didn't when I went live, but I did after. <sighs> uh, we are playing uh, Layton's Mystery Journey this morning. We should be on case 9, I believe that's correct. I don't remember. The tea is still too hot because I don't have any milk to cool it down. Oh. I woke up rough this morning, so I'm just a little out of it. I don't know why, I went to bed like super early for me. Alright, let's continue. Continue on. Yeah, we're not reading that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Case 9, yes. So the plan is uh, to finish through uh, this game, uh, Paper Mario, and then we'll, uh, depending on which one finishes up first, we'll replace that game with Pokemon. Which thankfully just showed up today, even though the thing said Wednesday. So, whatever. That's fine. Uh, but, you know, Pokemon will be coming. If you want Pokemon earlier than that, um, I think tomorrow, for New Day Tuesday over the Loading Ready Run channel, uh, Ben and I will be playing Pokemon. I'm going to be starting over for this channel. I'm not going to I'm not going to continue on a save file from 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 a different channel this time around. But let's see. This is what is this thing? Despite Godwin's Day Bank holiday, the Inspector Hastings it is in flap because it's his wife's birthday. Right. It's an anime filler episode. top screen as priority because it's probably going to be what we need. Hey, Tran. Well, now I finished my book. I think it's time for a nice cup of tea. Oh, but I just had some tea not long ago, didn't I? Well, maybe instead of a siesta. Ah, shut up, Cheryl. I couldn't. Not today because you couldn't possibly be bothered. No, no, that's not it. Miss Leighton has a very good reason for not tidying up. Really? Come on then, lay it on me. Because it's Godwin's day. Uh-huh. That's the one, one of the annual bank holidays we enjoy in London. All right, I believe it. Okay, it's got an ancient story behind it. Is this a real day, or is this something that the game is making up? I'm never s totally sure. Many, many years ago, right here in the capital, St. Godwin appeared to the king of the land. Your majesty, your subjects are exhausted because they are working too hard. Do you not see them suffering? The king looked around the land and saw the saint was right. Feeling ashamed that he failed to notice his subject suffering, the king made it today a holiday from that year forward, and he named it for the saint. Obviously, nobody knows if that's what really happened, but anyway, it's a bank holiday and no one's allowed to work. second something's going on and I need to double check on something I'll be right back okay got that sorted sorry that was a work thing looks like a latent holiday not a real one all right cool I'm never sure because this game has enough stuff that's probably real all right that's right as a Londoner, it would be totally awful if I didn't, you know, follow this very important tradition. 
Oh, such a modern, forward-thinking woman. Yeah, you still hold the old customs. Such an inspiration. Ernest, you should take a holiday and leave. Just don't come back. Procrastinator. Nah, holiday celebrator. What are you doing? Oh, I came to see Miss Layton. I'm not working. You want another cup of tea? This isn't work. Yeah, alright, dude. Go away. I don't pay you salary. Yes, because I told you to leave. And you just stuck around, so I guess I wouldn't, would I? Well, he said he didn't mind. He said he'd be my assistant anyway. I didn't tell him to leave. And he's still here, so why would I pay a person that I didn't want? Yeah, I don't mind. I'm just gonna be here always. Oh, hey, look, a visitor. Wonder who could be on Godwin's day. Oh, you're here. Thank goodness I found you. I was ready to throw in the towel if your office was shut as well. Oh dear, you seem very flustered. Something, something happened? Oh, no, absolutely terrible. In all my years of being a detective, I've never come across a situation that's stickier than this one. Oh my goodness, what's happened? Sounds like we need to brace ourselves. All right, fill us in. Yes, well, it's a delicate matter, you see. I, I don't want to think about it. The thing is, it's the better half's birthday today. I'm sorry. Uh-huh, and, and what, what does this have to do with anything? It only happens once a year, and... I forgot, and I didn't get a present or a cake, and, you know, she gave me the hevo unless I can do something to fix this, so I need you, I need this, need you to help me. It's a holiday too, so everything's shut. Oh man, I hope this is just a thing where we bake a cake. Oh, maybe not, that's a little goofy even for this. It's anticipating cases like the witch I've never seen before, and you give me a marriage rescue operation? Would... Talk about being used as a dog's body? I'm not familiar with that. Quite right. Nobody likes to be used as a dog's body. A weird expression. How did this happen? How did you manage to forget such an important day? Oh, I just, myself, it's my problem. I've been so busy these past months, it totally slipped my mind. Marked it on the calendar, so I wouldn't end up in this situation. Where's your calendar? In my study at home, I've got one in the office of the yard as well. Oh, well it's no wonder you didn't notice then. Yep. <laughs> oh, MTV CD, yeah, I have totally done that retail. Uh, my favorite one, uh, retail-wise that happened, which wasn't even Christmas related, it was like, it was a Sunday, I was literally closing the, the, the sliding doors, and just before they fully closed, this lady, like, slipped in, and, and wanted to buy a thing, and I was just like, I really just needed her to leave. Like, all, everything was cashed out, cause mom was like, really, really dead. And, and I was just like, you need to leave. It's Sunday. I don't catch a bus in like 10 minutes. I'm hooped. And she did not want to leave. And I was just like, oh, I'm so hooped. Either way, I'm hooped. I hate when people do that. Like, I understand why they're doing it, but they don't. They don't really understand. Kavina, hey, thank you for resubscription. 15 months. Detect all the things. Yeah. I'm gonna detect a date. Oh, why do you think that, miss? Oh, I mean, the inspector just told us he's been extremely busy, which means he would have no time for sitting in a study at home and probably the little in his office, so he's been out and about, and therefore didn't read his calendar. Hey, bye. Bye. Have fun. I will. You too. Of course, he hasn't had any time to look at his calendar to notice the reminder. Oh, that's right, I haven't been getting home until small hours. 
Which is another reason I was thinking I better make an effort this year. And it's not too late. Day's not over. That's what I thought. I've been all over the city looking for something. But it's gone Wednesday. Every shop I look at is closed. Can't buy her a present, I can't get her a cake. Even the bakers and the like are shut. Can't get a table at any restaurant. In fact, this place is about the only establishment I've come across that's open. Well, we're not technically open today. I actually, I just live here. <laughs> I've got until this evening to come up with something. I'm telling you, I've never seen my, my little lemon so livid. <laughs> what a sentence. Gosh, that doesn't leave much time, does it? Nope. I've been all day looking for a present, and here I am, no better off. You gotta help me out, cat. Help me find a present. Unless I see your predicament. What's a bank holiday, you know? Please. I'm working in Godwin's day. It's not what a gentlewoman does. I think we should try to help, miss. I mean, it's gonna be sadder to have a birthday forgotten. What do you think, Cheryl? Leave me out. Alright, well, as you're the inspector, I guess I can make a special exception. Ah, oh, yes, thank you. It's not exactly detective work, is it? I mean, it's a holiday. Do we have to do our regular work? I, was, I mean, any mystery solved. That's my motto. The only mystery is how he got you to agree to help. He talked at me until I couldn't say no. I don't know. Inspector Hastings, here you are. What's up, constable? Ah, yes, it says here there's a break-in at the city center. Perpetrator's on the run. What? Yeah, you left a note. Um, uh, catch me if you can, you stupid pigs. Oh, it's a challenge, is it? Right, Booker, I'm on my way. A break-in? Oh, dear. Working on Godwin's Day? What was that thief thinking? <laughs> I have to go down. Can't ignore the blatant goading. Too right, but we haven't worked out anything, have we? Ah, no, we'll figure it out. You go catch the thief. You can leave the people of London in which that so that's just not for you. Ah, alright. Excellent. Let's get her a thing. Let's get her a teddy bear. What do we have around the office that we're not using? Maybe we could re-gift something we don't need. He left in a hurry, didn't he? Yes, and we have to hurry now, too. We must come up with something for his wife before the end of the day. I'm not sure what we can do to avert disaster there. We just have to think of a present so wonderful it makes her forget about the fact that he didn't remember. I have sure it'll smooth things over. The problem is how to find an impressive enough present on a bank holiday. How do we do that? The inspector said he's been trawling the streets since this morning. Well, inaction certainly won't help us find the answer. Let's go along Chancer Lane and see what we can find. Felicity. You must be the detective, I presume? Oh, hello. Can I help you? Well, we've spoken before, I think. It's Catriel, isn't it? This must be Ernest with you, and I was Shirley or something. And you are? Oh, sorry, I'm Felicity. Oh, you're right. We should just give him a puzzle. It can be a salt puzzle we don't have to solve. That's not our problem. Our problem, this problem is, it's theirs now. Felicity Hastings? You mean you're Inspector Hastings' wife? Yeah, he's always telling me how you've been helping him. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we've worked with him. Ah, uh, well, sorry, I mean, my husband has nothing but good things to say about you, I assure you. He thinks you're a very talented detective. Oh, well, thank you. Apparently you have a unique personality and a knack for solving difficult cases. Nah, I just input numbers until people tell me that's the answer and they leave me alone. Oh, yes, I hear you're a genius when it comes to puzzles. Oh, no. This is a good one, you know. You should give it a try. I didn't come here just to give you a puzzle, I promise, but I totally did. <laughs> birthday brain teaser. Today is this preschooler's birthday. There were some number-shaped candles on the cake to show her age, and they've been dropped on the floor, 
And now they're in pieces. If you arrange three of them together, they should make the right number. Slide the pieces of cake... Slide the pieces of candle into the bottom of the right to make the right number. Okay. That's a lot of numbers. Why are there extra number pieces? What kind of cake candle thing did you get? Oh no, I think the nine can technically work too. just says to arrange three of them and to make the right number, right? It doesn't say anything about... Yeah, lower number's probably better. I've seen how to solve this now. Nope. Oh, that's not like me. The shapes of the different pieces and try to work out which ones might fit together. I did do that. Goodness, puzzle. I did do that. Hi, anti crux healer. Preschoolers are like six. I can't rotate these. I mean, nine's the only other number I can see because this is part of a two. It's part of a three. It's part of a one. Four. Nine seems too old. This should do it, I think. Not good, Catriel, not good. Oh, that's mean. I've seen how to solve this now. Any mystery or any puzzle solved. But why were there other numbers? You didn't have additional candles. Your puzzle makes no sense. Well, I can see why my husband calls on your services so frequently. You never give up. Only problems were so easily solved. Oh, do you, do you have something on your mind? As a matter of fact, I do. I'm rather down in the dumps today. London can be a very gloomy place when you're not feeling your best. No, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're not happy. I hope that changes for you soon. Oh, aren't you sweet? I don't suppose I could bend your ear, could I? I mean, sure, why not? It's just that my husband's job is so demanding. I know it's a wonderful thing that he does, and I support him. But just once in a while, it would be nice if he thought about me a little. You know, it's my birthday today. Because it's a bank holiday, I'd hoped we'd be able to spend some time together and celebrate for once. Oh yes, of course birthdays are very important. 
course, I was fuming when I found out he'd forgotten. And then he got all dramatic and said, I'll get you a present if it's the last thing I do, and ran off. The present would be nice, but the truth is... Sorry, I've done nothing but grumble and grouse. I thought I could pop out to the hairdresser and maybe get an ice cream or something. But everything's shut, of course. I suppose I'll just have to try and forget all about it and go home. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thanks for listening. Oh, she's upset, isn't she? As Inspector Hastings said she was angry, but she didn't seem angry to me. Not so much a bloodhound as a melancholy. Okay, that's a pretty good fun. It's not bad. We must find a good present. It's not for Inspector Hastings, for Felicity. I wonder what would be good. Uh, we didn't ask what sorts of things she likes, did we? Uh, maybe an outfit? Or some jewelry? Just the sort of thing we might find at the boutique down the road. The boutique. The boutique. Special day. We found a clue to a mystery we're not solving. Because it's not a mystery. Oh, hey, look, they happen to be open. Oh, I mean, that's why it's called the Lucky Clover. That old lady we bump into has unusual opening times, doesn't she? I'm sure it's really open. The woman who runs it might just be stock taking or something. Well, I mean, yeah, it's probably open. Let's go ask. Hey, are you open? Miss Price? Feel free to... No, what am I thinking? What do you want? It's unusual to find a shop open on Godwin's Day. Actually, this is great, because we... No, I'm not open. But the door was ajar, and... and... I just came to pick some things up. I won't be here for long. The shop is closed. Oh, so you won't sell us anything. Nope. It's a bank holiday. No one works on Godwin's Day. I'll have to ask you to come back another time. Oh, I see. Well, this didn't work out. Well, that didn't work. I really thought we'd start gold when we found the Lucky Clover open. Does that mean clothes and accessories are off the list of possibilities then? Gosh, what a pickle. Well, we've embarked on a real hopeless mission here, haven't we? We'll just have to see if we can find another shop that's open. Uh, let's see, there are a few other shops around Chancellor Lane Corner we could try. It's worth a shot, let's go see what, what theirs is. Let's see, any of these shops open? Restaurants shut? Mm, everyone wants to take a holiday when they can, I suppose. Isn't that the Lipsky brothers over there? Oh, perfect. Maybe they could sell us a cake. Do you think the patisserie area is open? Well, we'll go ask. Are you open? Oh no. I'm gonna have to solve a puzzle before they tell me. Bratsy, that way will not work. But your way is a stupid way. We should walk away from this conversation. Oh no, we caught them in an argument. Alex, hands, what are you quarreling about? Oh good, you come at the right time. We're trying to solve a difficult puzzle. Maybe you can help us. Will you make me a cake if I help you? Oh no, it's a cake-based puzzle. In this picture, you can see a cake in the shape of the number six. You need to cut the cake in a straight line to make two numbers. How could you cut the cake to make the largest possible total if you were to add the two numbers together? What would the total be? Huh? I have to cut the cake in a straight line to make two numbers, and then... 
add the two numbers together to make the largest possible total. Alright. Sure. Hey, I, Anubis. Why? <laughs> Side question, why are you cutting a cake to make a math problem? I have no idea. Will they give me a... Uh... Okay, cool. Alright, so... I need a straight line. I guess I can technically... Yeah, the way they've done the 6, I can cut it that way. But 1 and 0 equals 1, so that's probably... Um, straight line. I feel like this is going to be like a, a, a BS answer where it's not so much that you're adding the two numbers together so much as there's two numbers now beside each other and the answer's like 10. Problem is I can only see you cutting the one and the zero part. I'm not sure. Because <sighs> if I cut it in any other way, I cut the circle in half. And that doesn't seem right. Alright, I believe in BS. A good puzzle is something you have to chew on. No? Okay. <laughs> I haven't got my paw in today. Yes, no, I, I understand I need to figure out where to cut now. I get that. Okay, well, the only other answer I can think is one. A good puzzle is something you have to chew on. Yeah, okay, so it's some other kind of BS answer. I've got my paw in today. The solution was to cut through the middle of the one part to make it one plus nine. Ah. Alright, well, let's see what they wrote down for hints. The numbers you will be cut, you will make by cutting the number are both single digits. Great, yeah, 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 no, figured that part out. If you turn the six around, it becomes nine. Uh huh. Think about how to cut it to make a nine. I mean, I still think that makes the answer 10. Uh, I eat puzzles like this for breakfast. That was too easy. Such BS. So much BS. Nope. Don't 
I refuse to accept this answer. Oh, uh, you know, it's a cake that's a six, so turn it around to make it a nine, but also cut it in the way that no one will cut it. Mm -hmm. Garbage. Garbage. Ah, uh, yes, now I see the answer. This way of cutting cakes is not good. It makes me uncomfortable. Yes! Agreed! So what are you both doing here today, now that we've gotten that out of the way? Oh, Bratsy and me, we're going out. Oh, so you're not open today then, huh? What about the Elizabeth Tower? Is there never any maintenance work to carry out on the clocks on Big Ben or Godwin's Day? Oh, no, yes, sometimes, but I just all clocks carefully yesterday. Today is no work day. Bratsy and me never have a holiday at the same time, so we arranged for a long time ago to do something together. Oh, well, that's nice of them. Ah, I'm thinking about staying home for relaxing instead, but Bratsy wants to go out, so Bratsy must go out. Sometimes it's nice to just stay in, isn't it? What are you doing today, detective? You want to see us for something? Ah, no, yes, uh, we're doing a favor for Inspector Hastings. He's in a bit of a tough spot. It's, it's his wife's birthday today, but he's been so busy solving crimes that he hasn't got a present or a cake. Oh, the man is too busy. Always running around like chicken without head. We're very grateful. Maybe there is something we can do? Oh, I mean, we wouldn't want to inconvenience you. You're just on your way out, aren't you? I'm sure we'll manage something. Don't worry about it. Well, good luck. Please buy interesting and fun gift. Oh, thank you. We'll do our best. I hope you have a fun evening. Well, we probably could have had them make a cake or at least sell us a cake or something that was already done, but we told them not to, that everything would be fine. So we'll think of something else. I wonder how the inspector's getting along with the case he was called to. Even if we manage to find a present in time, it won't do if the inspector himself isn't available. That's true. Maybe we can find him and let him know how we're getting on. Maybe we can find him and tell him we haven't found anything yet. Yes, that's a great idea. How will we find him, though? Mm, let's go to Scotland Yard, and if he's not there, we can ask where to find him. We are bad at our job. That is not part of our job. This is not a clue. Business district. Ah, oh, you don't suppose that Scotland Yard is closed today as well, do you? Oh, of course not. Criminals don't take the day off, so neither can the police. I wonder if Eric Inspector Hastings is back here already. Ah, oh, I hope he's managed to catch that burglar. We could ask the Bobby outside the building if he knows. Ah, you don't take the day off either, do you? PC beat. Hello, hello. Quite right, miss. Godwin's day means nothing to us coppers. But we all knew that we were getting to in this game, so no complaints. Keeping the public safe is our number one priority. Oh, what a noble attitude. Not that I'd say no to a lion if the opportunity presented itself, of course. I'm only human. Good people of London come first. We must have our priorities straight. I think you're doing a wonderful job. So, thank you. Oh, you're too kind. It's words like those that help me beat the alarm clock in the morning. I don't suppose you know if Inspector Hastings has come back yet. I'm sorry, but I've only just arrived at my post and I've yet to see him today. Uh, perhaps there might be somebody inside who knows. Let's, let's go in and have a look. <laughs> Do, 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 do. 
Oh, it seems busier in here than ever. No sign of Inspector Hastings down here, though. Perhaps he's still out chasing that thief? There's the detective who came to find old Super Snitch before. Look. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. Well, if he's here, perhaps the inspector is back. Let's go ask him. Hello. Oh, yes, Miss Layton. Sorry for interrupting before. Hey, did you manage to catch that culprit? Hmm, let's see. Uh, I was called away to another incident before it was resolved, so I can't tell you. Inspector Hastings is back, though, in his office. Oh, maybe that he solved the case already. Let's go find him. Oh, hey, you're back. Look. Hello. Have you been here long? I've only just got back myself. Nope, just just arrived. Did you get your thing? Yep. With a little help from Joe Public, but we nicked him all right. Well, that's good news. Well, he was a slippery critter, this one, and quick on his pins. He ran off into this park. But because it's Godwin's day, the place was packed, so I had an idea. I shouted out, That fellow's a thief! And then all the people in the park went after him. And they had him surrounded, and all I had to do was slap cuffs on him. Oh, goodness, he really did get help from the public. <laughs> yeah, we'd have lost him otherwise, I think. Anyway, more importantly, have you come up with a present? No. Everything's closed. Hmm, I had a nasty feeling you'd say that. Hey, don't be defeated. It's not over. We've got time. <clears throat> oh, there's no hope of getting a present, is there? Every shop is shut. And it's too late to go traipsing further afield now. I don't know what else I can do. It's too soon to give up. There may be other ways of obtaining a present that we haven't thought of yet. We'll keep thinking. I'm looking for something that Felicity would like. Well, thanks. Beats me why we're going to such a lot of trouble to help me, but I appreciate it. Oh, it's because we want to? <laughs> Game just took turns into cooking mama for a second. Aren't you being too nice? Anyway, what have you got in mind? What are you going to find a present? <laughs> now, now. I hardly count what happened to Ben as, as being a result of DB. That's just a result of Ben. Sorry, do you think the answer doesn't lie in the shops? I have an inkling that someone I know may have been able to help. Oh, who's that then? All in good time, Inspector. I need to head over to Guildhall for now. Guildhall? Yes, although I can't promise the person in question will be there, of course. Alright, well, it's just down the road, so I'll come along with you. Uh, our new clue. Support from the public. Oh no, this is gonna be a... Hmm. I have a bad feeling about how this present is gonna end up. Let's see, if we were going to Guild Hall, I assume we were looking for you. <clears throat> oh, um, hello. Hello, Miss Tate. Are you working? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, then why are you here? Ah, I'm just on my way home, visiting my grandma. Oh, I thought it was rather... rather strange to find you here. Working, even though it's a bank holiday? Oh, sort of, yes. It's not exactly work as such, but... I see. Well, I hope you managed to find some time to relax. You're as busy as the mayor. Ah, yes. Is the mayor in today? Uh, let me see. I think I saw her heading into her chamber when I passed by this morning. She's probably in there working. Well, I gotta need to go. 
I had a feeling Pimper would be here, even today. She's devoted to her job. We're here to see the mayor? Yes, I feel she's gonna have some great advice for us. Okay, well, let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, hello, Pipper. Oh, she's not here. Maybe she went home? Blast, I was hoping she'd be able to save the day. Hmm, I wonder where she might have gone. Oh, I've got it. I know where she'll be. Really? Just a stone's throw from here. She's one of her favorite places. Ah, she's on the balcony. Oh no, puzzles. Hey, I thought we'd find you here. Oh, you obviously know me very well. Only because of that one case time. Ari had an inkling when we stepped through the door. What? I never noticed any giveaway signs. Once I saw that her chamber was empty, then I just knew. Ugh, so you didn't deduce anything. Uh, of course not. Well, I'm sure you're really good at your job, Catriel. You have wonderful instincts. Oh, thank you. See, Inspector? The mayor believes in me. Hmm, yes, well. Hey, so what are you doing out on the balcony? Oh, I was just mulling over something. Came out here for a change of scenery. It's not a puzzler, actually. So, maybe you want to solve it? It is a puzzler. It's not a puzzler. It's a puzzle. Mystifying months. From left to right, we have person A, person B, and person C. Based on their comments, figure out each of their birth months. Okay, C was born two months before, after A. A and I were born exactly six months apart. Alright. Alright. C was born two months after A. If B and A are exactly six months apart. B was born in the month whose number is three times bigger than C. Alright. B was born the month whose number is three times bigger than C. So... Three times bigger. Let's see, you can do three times bigger than one is three. Six. Nine. And twelve. So three, six, nine, and twelve are your viable numbers. Or B. Um, B is born in the month. He's three times bigger than C. B says A and them were born exactly six months apart. So, if that's true. you would have to be 9. For this, you would be 12. This would be 3, and then this would be 6 for you. Um, and then C has to be born 2 months. A. 
supposed to be in the same year? born in the month whose number is three times bigger than mine. It has to make it okay so if B is three times bigger than C you can't be three because you So it's six, twelve, and two. It's this one. Let's see the one where that all fits, right? We did a bunch of math and it works. Whose birthday might it be today? Uh, it's November, so none of them. I don't know what month it is in game. I topped mushroom soup. Okay. Oh, that's a trick. I never would have thought of that. Math? Oh, yes. Uh, I know, we don't usually do a lot of math around here. Instead, we usually go, what's the most BS answer we can come up with? Uh, that's the answer's probably one or zero. Oh, it's nothing, really. Well, now I can get back to looking at those papers. You're working hard, I see, even though it's a bank holiday. Oh, I mean, it's not really work. I enjoy reading these documents. Oh, come on. It's me you're talking to. We both know that's not true. Well, you're all working even though it's God Wednesday, aren't you? Those long faces don't look like they belong to people on a social call. Oh, uh, well... The thing is, it's Inspe Inspector Hastings' wife's birthday. But it's a bank holiday and we can't find any place open. Uh, yes, I also- I was so busy to- at work, I forgot. You forgot? Whoa, that was a neat sound effect. <laughs> Inspector, shame on you. It's only once a year. Birthdays are very important, you know. Erm. Um. Birthdays are a time to celebrate your arrival into this wonderful world of ours. You should always be the center of attention on your birthday. It should be the happiest day of your year. Honestly, a husband should never ever forget something so important. Even if there's someone persuaded your wife to forgive you, I won't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mayor. Oh, that's the pipper I know. Deeply passionate about all kinds of festivity. I've tried, you know. I've been running all over the city today, looking for a present for my little lemon. Everything's shut. It doesn't look like it's going to be possible to buy a present today, which is why we've come to see you. Why me? Because I know you're always thinking of what people need and what will make people happy. I, I thought maybe you'd be able to figure out our problem and how come up with a good idea. Hey, E-Block. No, I'm flattered that you thought about my advice. Seems to me that you're approaching this the wrong way. 
You've been intent on finding a present for your wife. But the truth is, material things don't make people happy. Hmm. I suppose the Riverside Festival is a good example of that. It's not a material object, but it certainly makes a lot of people happy. Exactly. So I suggest you stop thinking about a present and start thinking about what would make your wife happy. Oh, that's good advice. I see that you know what I'm talking about. But... Hang on, a birthday without a single present? That can't work, can it? I think perhaps the inspector needs a little more time to catch on. He's not very good at understanding women's feelings, to be honest. Hey, I'm still here, you know. It's no use, I've had it. I haven't gotten her anything, the day's almost over. I won't solve your problem with that kind of attitude. Don't get so worried and just try to relax. Tell me, what do you think about the view from this balcony? Oh, it's beautiful, really. How about you? Uh, at least if any crime's going on down there, it's too far away for me to see it. I think it's stunning. It's beautiful in the evening sunlight, like now. But at night, it really comes alive. Yes, you showed me the view from here during the Riverside Festival. It was breathtaking. For some reason, however tired I'm feeling, that view really gives me energy, and I feel like I can keep up on my work. And at night, when I see all the pinpricks of light, I imagine that a family's living in my city. It just makes me want to do everything I can. Well, I mean, when you put it like that, I suppose it's just more than a view. That's right, isn't it? Why don't you all stay and watch as it gets dark? It won't be long now. Oh, I wish I could, but time's not on my side today. No? That's a sa shame. I'm sure if you could afford the time, it would do you good. Perhaps you'd even think of a good idea to please your wife. Oh, thanks for the advice. We've got some thinking to do. Before the evening is properly upon us. The city at night. Clues. Mm. Well, I feel like speaking to Pipper gave me the seed of an idea. It's not quite formed yet, though. Oh, this is a tricky case. I don't know that it's a case. Nah, forget it. Evening's upon us. We basically run out of time. Oh, it's too soon to throw in the towel now. Hey, you have to keep going to the last possible moment. Now look, I appreciate everything you've done. Giving up your day to help me, it's more than I deserve. But it's nearly the end of the day. I can't leave my poor little lemon alone all bleeding day, can I? Sad thing is, I've been thinking about her. I wish I could have made her birthday special like she wanted. But I've only got myself to blame. Looks like I have to go home empty-handed. Waste any more time on me. Go home yourselves and at least enjoy what's left of the day. <clears throat> oh, poor man, he looks smaller than usual, don't you think? I feel like we've let him down. If only there was something we could do. Well, we should head back to the office. Hello, Dean Delona. Who are you? Hey, Thirsty Kitty. My biz and Catriel. Hello, Dean Delona. What a pleasant surprise bumping into you here. Who is this person? I'm as surprised as you, yes. Who's this old mop head? This is the Dean of. Gresson Heller University. He's an old acquaintance of Miss Layton's. Oh, I wonder if our meeting like this was actually inevitable. What do you mean? Well, my granddaughter has sent me another puzzle, you see. But it's got me stumped. Can't think of anyone more likely to be able to solve it than you. I like the term chatsmans because it sounds like you're all Digimon. Funny fractions. Oh, fractions, really? The professor's written a sum on the board. The writing on the left expresses the fraction on the right. In this case, what number should go in the empty space at the bottom right? Um... <clears throat> I 
I on the left express is the fraction on the right. What number goes in the thing? What? <laughs> That's a good digital evolving. It's real good. Um. That top number is actually like a 100. It's the number at the bottom right, one tenth. Oh, this is gonna be dumb as an answer, isn't it? It's gonna be totally dumb. Thank you for that sub, Cuddly Kitty. <laughs> when that Twitch Prime. <laughs> uh, did you evolve into Cuddly Kitty under the right circumstances? That's fantastic. <laughs> I feel like the answer is either going to be like 1 or 100. I'm going to go with 100. This is like. Uh, this is not me solving anything. I've seen this is how to me. Solve this now. This is me going gut instinct. What's the actual solution to this? The writing at the top says 10%, which is 1 tenth, and the writing at the bottom says 1%, which is 1 over 100. That was nice and easy. I knew it was some sort of VS thing. That's not exactly what I was expecting. But sure. Sure. Oh, that's marvelous. My little angel will be so pleased. I'm happy I could be of assistance to you. You don't look your usual cheerful self. Something on your mind? Oh, you're very perceptive. Actually, a little, little sumped. I got a very difficult case that's not really a case. Well, perhaps I can help out. Do mind you tell me about it? Alright, let me tell you about it. Ah, yes. It's the inspector's birthday. Yes, he forgot. It was awful. Oh, no. What a... Whoa, he's... Air? Okay. I've been trying desperately to help him find something, but we draw drawn a blank. Oh, I should be disappointed if he doesn't even manage to rustle up a present. Hmm, I see. Okay, presents are all well and good, but they're not the be end, be all and end all. Well, that was a lot of alls. I didn't quite follow. Haven't you ever heard the expression, it's the thought that counts? That doesn't mean thinking about a present necessarily. It's thinking about celebrating together all the things the wife does for him and how much he loves her. I mean, I'd say telling the woman how he feels about such things would be far more valuable than any gift. Mm, yes, telling her about his feelings. Huh, what a novel concept. Oh, that's very romantic. Oh, hey, thanks. You've given me something to think about. Well, good luck. And don't give up. Your father wouldn't, would he? Anyway, I must be off. Do you show your face at the university sometime, okay? Hmm. Well, I don't want to give up, but this certainly isn't easy. More or less lost the last of the daylight. Time's up, isn't it? You mustn't neglect yourself, Miss Layton. You need to put your feet up sometimes. Why don't we go back to the office? I just feel like I'm on the brink of a great idea. Oh, what to do, what to do. Showing appreciation. Such a clue. My husband's been incredibly busy for the past three months, and it's so busy that he forgot to get me a thing for my birthday. You know what would have been great? Him just being around since he's been so busy for three months. <sighs> I mean, it's easy to get caught up in stuff so people forget. It happens. Do, 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 do. 
How strange. What's up? It just feels different here somehow, even though nothing actually appears to have changed. Don't you think so? Mm, when I pause to think about it, eh, it does feel sort of desolate. It's because there aren't any people about. That's it, yes, you're quite right. The street is totally deserted. Nothing happened. happening on Chancer Lane? That's unheard of. Perhaps it's because we talked to everyone here before. Perhaps that made them disappear. What? That can't happen, can it? No, I was only joking. There has to be someone about. Let's head up the street to the office. I'm sure we'll find some signs of life. Ah, no one around here either. Oh, wait a minute. Look, there's someone over there. The last man standing on Chancer Lane. Stop being creepy. <laughs> hey, Weagle, thank you for resubscribing. 14 months. Oh, hey, a button. Wonder what it does. Let's find out. <laughs> thank you. I wonder why there's so few people around. Maybe we should ask that guy over there. I guess we've started this new mystery. Why no one around? Even though bank holiday, clearly... Sir, do you know why no one's around here? Oh, I mean, it's because it's a special day. But, well, I mean, yeah, sure, it's Godwin's Day. Yes, a day of rest for all London's inhabitants. Everyone must be home soon, safe in their houses. The children at, at play back inside. Everything still. Like this puzzle! Children playing at the park. Oh no, you're the matchstick dude. Long on home. Move one of the matches to spell out the reason they went home. They cannot be rotated. Um. Oh, I can only move one. Is an interesting I like pork as an answer. Pork is a better answer. <laughs> but the answer is it's got, it got dark. We had to take the word park and change it to something. So dark. Evil luck, <laughs> thank you for that pork cheer. You know the answer was dark, the children at home because it got dark. And also when children go away, the cats, it's I uh, see, it's not so much that it got dark outside, it's because the cats booked this space for a meeting. They get it at nighttime. That makes more sense, yes. Good social management. Ha, oh, I'm glad you solved that in time. Seems like you aren't aware of the traditions of God Wednesday. The traditions? This is the day of rest, a day when no work is to be done. But that is not all this city dictates. I mean this day dictates. Whatever fun thou hast by day, come eventide, go home to play. That's the old adage of Godwin's day. You mustn't forget it. Look around you. Others haven't forgotten, have they? Be gone. Home with you, lest you break an important tradition. Come eventide, go home to play. I'd never heard of that little rhyme before. Well, explains why the street is as dead as a dodo. So, at the end of Godwin's day, everyone's at home? That's it! I've got it! The last clue! Somehow I've solved this. We're gonna get her to look out on the balcony with, like, all the lights on, and it's gonna be fantastically pretty. Or something. In the mayor's office, maybe. This present mystery is history! Come up with something? I don't believe it. Explain everything later. For now, I need you and Ernest to do something for me. Anything you say, anything at all. Fine. I'll bite. 
Although Super Snitch doesn't deserve it, he's always calling me a she. Ah, thank you. Listen carefully. Do exactly what I say. What are you gonna do? I'm going to go and fetch the inspector. Isn't it too late? Nope. It's just about to start. The present I have in mind will only work after dark. Anyway, never mind. Follow these instructions. It looks so pretty. Nice, isn't it, love? Not so many lights tonight. I suppose most people are asleep. We haven't come here for donkey's ears, have we? No. Nah. Huh? <laughs> what? Ah, very cute. God, you would have had to have oh, figured out which houses you, to go turn on. Did you do that for me? Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And to think I was annoyed with you for not getting me a present this year. Honestly, you. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That was cute. Kat, I don't know how to repay you. You really saved my bacon. <laughs> Just look at all those nights, eh? <laughs> Actually, it's thanks to you that so many people agreed to turn on their lights like that tonight. Thanks to me? In order to spell out the words, we delivered notes to 186 separate households. Oh, yeah. This is what I wrote. We are asking you to turn on all your lights when it gets dark at the end of the bank holiday. You'll be helping to deliver a message for one of London's most faithful servants, Inspector Hastings, CID. You what? Everyone who turned on their lights tonight did so as an expression of gratitude to you, Inspector. For all your hard work and devotion to your job, for keeping us all safe. Well, I don't know what to say. Thank you, London. Aww. And thank you, Kate. Riel? Um, let's not forget. Pinstripes and I were the dog's bodies. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why she had to step on the dog. Miss Layton, a parcel's arrived for you from Inspector Hastings. Ah, oh, a little thank you, perhaps. Oh, what's this? One of my Little Lemon's homemade cakes for you to say thanks for the other day. Enjoy. <laughs> Gosh, that does look good. Oh, wait. He's written more on the back. It's our wedding anniversary coming up, so you might want to get thinking about that. Dude, that's your job. We helped you out of a scrape. Not, be not become... No. Huh. Who does he think I am? Catriel Layton... Private detective and party planner. Ah. And so Inspector Hastings celebrated his wife's birthday with her in style. The Battle of Hastings was <laughs> the Battle of Hastings was won, and not a single eye lost. But next time, Inspector, plan your own parties, or you'll get one in the eye from me. I mean, that was actually quite sweet. Just... Battle of Hastings comment was weird. <laughs> nope, not reading that. Case 10. Alright. Got 20 minutes, let's go find out what this new case is. I mean, 40 minutes. We got about 40 minutes. Hmm. The importance of being earnest. Ernest is having a very bad day. He's implicated in a serious crime on his first day at Gressenhaller University. Alright. Let's go find it out. Hello, Cheryl. Oh, there you are. I've been getting to wonder what had happened to you. Miss Leighton asked me to stop off on my way in and buy some things for her. Tea, of course. 
This fashion magazine, a snack for later on today. Being the dog's body again, eh? Isn't Miss Layton here her yet herself? She's gone out already. Said she'd be back late. Oh, what a pity. She left a message for you, though. Want to hear it? Of course. Gosh, this sounds awfully important. Alright then, if you're sure you're ready. <clears throat> Ernest, while I'm gone, tidy up. Is that it? Afraid so. Not quite what you were expecting, eh? Feel your pain. Oh no, it's quite alright. I had a suspicion it might say that. So, where shall I start, I wonder? Rough being the underdog, eh? I mean, to tidy up after your boss because she's so terrible at it? I wouldn't say that. She's not terrible at tidying at all. She tidies when she wants to tidy, but when she doesn't want to tidy, she doesn't. She's just being true to herself. She's just being true to her selfishness, you mean? She's never wanted to tidy in her life, so Muggins has to do it. Well, that last part may be true. Anyway, there's something I've been meaning to ask you, Pinstripes. This is the perfect opportunity. Oh, what is it? What are you doing? Why do you work here as Cat's assistant? She doesn't even pay you, does she? No, she doesn't. I work here because I owe Miss Layton a debt of gratitude. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is one of those things where I saved you and then you wouldn't leave. Ugh, that's worse. Must be a big one. What happened? It was when I met her for the first, first time. I'm listening. I was being investigated by Scotland Yard. Investigated? You? Come on. Do you think I was turned into a dog yesterday? Yes. Or at least maybe a week ago or something. I don't know. Flashback case. Inspector Hastings had summoned me to his office. There had been a theft, you see, and I was the prime suspect. Ernest Greaves! You did it, didn't you? It wasn't me. I'm innocent, Inspector, I swear. Don't give me that, sunshine. I know it was you who broke into Dr. Holmes' laboratory and nicked his research papers. Admit it. Broke into- No, no, I didn't. There's been some terrible misunderstanding. So you're still gonna deny it, are you? There are witnesses, you know. You were seen sneaking in there. What more evidence do you think I need to put you away? Come clean, or things are gonna get ugly. But when I just started at Gresham Heller University, why would a fresher like me... Oh, Gresham Heller University? doing barging in here when I'm interviewing a suspect. Can't believe you brought this poor man here to Scotland Yard. You what? You can't accuse people without carrying out a proper investigation first. Sounds like the only evidence you have is circumstantial. That he was at the scene. Who are you, you cheeky little so-and-so? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Catriel. Catriel Layton. Well, I don't care if you're the Queen of Sheba. You don't come down here and start interfering in police business. Got a complaint about the way we do things? You follow proper procedure and solve this puzzle. <laughs> Why did I not see that coming? Why did I not see the puzzle was gonna happen? Of course the puzzle was gonna happen. Just, just like, <sighs> you, you have a problem, you need to complain with proper procedure. Fill out this puzzle. Ah, oh, there's a line of five cars driving along the road, and they're all breaking the speed limit. The next day, the five drivers go to the police station, but only four of them are charged with speeding. Which car was the one that was being driven by the one who was not charged? Five cars along the road, they were all breaking the speed limit. Five drivers go to the police station. Only far, four of them are charged with speeding.
None of them look like they're nothing but cars. Who was the person who was not charged? definitely five drivers so one of these cars is probably not being towed I feel like it, you want it to be one of the middle cars because if everyone's speeding maybe you don't get Maybe you don't really have much of a choice. No three. I've seen how to solve this now. No. Okay. Oh, that's not like me. Try to picture the five cars speeding. I've seen how to solve this now. What's the matter with me today? people were driving over the speed limit. What could be the reason why just one of them wasn't charged? If you can figure out the reason, you can also figure out what position they were in. Wait, why? You can also figure out what position they were in? So... Oh no, that's also the back. I thought... Mm. There's a reason why one of the drivers could not be charged with speeding even if they were over the speed limit. I mean, I have an assumption. Four of the drivers were caught by the police. They were arrested for speeding. Who could have arrested the four of them? Well, yeah, clearly, but like... car chasing the speeding drivers from behind. That was like a thing I was thinking about doing, but I don't know. It just didn't seem like that was going to be right. It seemed like there was going to be another BS answer. What? You cracked it? Well, that's a turn up for the books. Any puzzle solved. That's my motto. Apparently I haven't gotten to the any mystery solved part yet. Unlike Scotland Yards, which seems to be any blame absolved. Ooh, shade. Why me? Inspector Eastings, sorry to barge in here, sir, but it's nearly time. Oh, yes, of course. I've got an appointment at Gresham Heller. Thanks for reminding me. 
Right, Greaves? Looks like you're off the hook for now. But you're still on the top of my list. As soon as I get more evidence... Oh no, please. Come on then, PC Beat. Let's get over to the university. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm free to go then, sir. How can I make him believe me? I didn't do it. Well, they're gone now and they said they're free to go. Why don't we go get out there? Oh, well, um, unless you'd like to stay. Oh, golly, no. I suggest we leave now before the inspector comes back. And that's how we got thrust together. How the heavens conspired to make us meet. She was like a goddess of destiny in my eyes then. for helping me before, I mean. I'm Ernest. Ernest Greaves. A pleasure to meet you. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, Miss Layden. I must say, it's jolly good of you to believe me. That I'm not the thief, I mean. Oh, no, I just couldn't abide that loudmouth inspector sloppy detective work, that's all. Oh. I wouldn't like to say if you did it or not. But I didn't do it. If it's that case about the stolen research papers, isn't it? From the professor? Yes, that's right. Somehow I seem to be a suspect. But you didn't do it, honestly? No, honestly, I didn't. Please, you have to believe me. Well, Ernest, if that's your real name. You don't look like a thief or the sort of person who tried to deceive others. I'm not. I really haven't done anything wrong. So you're a student at the university, are you? Yes, I'm only just enrolled, though. Somehow I've already managed to get myself into an awful mix. I always seem to be the most dastardly. have the most dastardly luck. Only this morning, I fell down a drain in the street and got bitten by a dog. I see. A walking calamity, you might say. Well, your luck may have changed. I was gonna go there anyway. If you come along with me, I can do what I was planning there and prove your innocence while I'm passing through. Oui, in passant. Unless you'd rather... I don't interfere. I mean, please do interfere. I mean, especially if you think you can prove it. Alright, let's go! Now? Yes? Yes, all right then. Miss Layton made it seem like proving my innocence would be as easy as falling off a log, so I went along with her, hoping desperately that she was right. Alright, what's the best way to the university from here? Oh, I can show you. Just follow me. I say, will this be your first time visiting? Oh, no, I used to go there quite often as a child, but it's been a rather long time. I haven't been from here before, so I'm not sure what the best way is. Really? Well, don't worry. We'll be there in a jiffy. It's a bike. New location, too. Here we are, in a jiffy, as promised. Well, this brings back memories. I haven't been here for so long. It's hardly changed at all. Are, are you alright? Sorry? Oh, yes, I'm fine. So, they say it's got a long and distinguished history, this college. That's right, it's one of the top two in London. It certainly looks the part. The buildings have that particular character about them that says this is a center of learning. Oh look, there's the constable we saw at Scotland Yard. What if he arrests me? Relax, he looks like he's busy investigating. In fact, why don't we ask him how his inquiries are coming? Oh, I hope they found something that proves I couldn't have done it. Top two colleges in London are made of concrete. Hello, 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 what have we here? If it isn't the fellow who Inspector Hastings brought in for questioning. You were discharged, lad. What are you doing here? Thought better of it and come to confess, have you? 
Uh, if only, yeah. I don't know if, uh, if it's a good idea for London to be made out of wafer brick. I don't know a lot about London, but my understanding is it rains there a lot. No, definitely not. Didn't do it. I'm rather intrigued by this case, Constable. I hear some research papers were stolen. No money, no other valuables. Were the documents worth anything? Well, there have to be there have been very important research papers to Dr. Genome. You know, Dr. Genome. And who is this Dr. Genome? Oh, I can fill you in on that front. He's one of the most influential researchers in the field of plant genetics. He's published countless revolutionary papers on the subject. He's actually the reason I enrolled here. I wanted to study under him for years now. Oh, and on your first day you managed to be accused of stealing his work. Well, yes, somehow I did. Apparently the results of Dr. Ohm's current research has been heavily anticipated by boffins all over the world for some time. So we believe, madam, that it is most likely it is worth a bob or two. I see. Cutting edge research, is it? The sort of scientific discovery that money can't buy, is that the idea? Precisely, madam. So we're investigating accordingly. Our inquiries are ongoing. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, constable. Well, Ernest, looks like the police are well underway with their investigation. So there's not a moment to lose. Why not, miss? Because we want to prove your innocence before they do, or don't. It's no fun if we don't beat them to it. Fun? That's right, fun. So I think you'd better tell me your movements up to when we the theft was discovered. What did you do today since you arrived? Where did you go? Who did you speak to? Tell me everything. Oh, yes. Well, today was my first day. Uh-huh. And I've just been dying to have my first lecture with Dr. Ohm. I think he's simply spiffing. Yes, I was looking f more for hard facts. Suddenly I found myself standing outside the gates of this wizard university thinking to myself, that's not really relevant to the moment, you see. Well, so, then I finally took my first step, my first footprint into the metaphorical snow of the campus. It really was nothing short of monumentous. Right, so to sum it up, you walk through the university gates. All right, let's follow your momentous steps of earlier today, shall we? Miss Layton started investigating the case in order for us to prove my innocence. I was terrified that the accusation should stick, that I'd be branded a criminal. But little by little, as I saw how confident she was, my nerves started to settle. I mean, the idea of a flashback case like this is not bad. It's kind of neat to see that. It's also nice to get rid of the dog. Get to see another another area. All right, then we've established you entered the university grounds. Then what? Is this strictly necessary? I mean, my moments in the lead up to the theft really important. Couldn't we just go straight to the crime and investigate there first? No, I have a feeling that understanding your movements is the way to go. Is is there really any more to it than a feeling? Don't worry. Trust your instincts. Or more precisely, trust mine. I see. It's your instincts that are guiding you. Alright, then I will. I'm sure your instincts won't let me down. Oh, thanks. So, what'd you do next? Oh, wait a minute. I've just swatted another policeman over there. You mean that man? Yes, that's him. He's one of Inspector Hastings' men. Really? So he's a detective, is he? Yeah, DC Booker, I think. Well, let's hope he doesn't book you then. Gosh, yes, I don't want that. Let's hide so he doesn't notice me. Don't be daft. We should use the opportunity to ask him how his investigation is progressing. You don't mean, you're not actually going to go and speak to him, are you? Sure. When we just keep loitering around him and giving him furtive glances, he'll definitely think we're suspicious. Well, alright then. Good day to you, detective. Hello? Wait, don't I know you, young man? Let me see. Yes, you fit the description here in my notes. Ernest Greaves, I believe. 
Where, where is it now? Ah, it's the prime suspect. Now, I mean, yes, I am Ernest Cruz, but I was released earlier due to lack of evidence. Ah, yes. Yes, it does mention, mention that here, actually. Oh, I'm glad your notes are up to date. Never go anywhere without my notebook. Hmm. Yes, I see there are a number of other suspects in this case. Really? I didn't know that. I mean, why would you? Uh, yes, a number of other researchers were competing with Ohm in his field. We believe... What do we believe? Ah, yes, we believe it might be a case of rival academic trying to discredit the professor. Does that mean I'm off the hook? No, that's just one possibility. You're still firmly in the picture. You're still in my notebook. You're still a suspect. Oh. I see. A world-famous professor would inevitably have rivals in his research, I suppose. Let's carry on tracing your movements. Did you enter the building next? No, I didn't do that. Really? You didn't go into the main building even on your first day? No, you see, when I come this far, I suddenly caught a wonderful floral whiff, and I wandered off in search of the flowers that had made it. You let the smell of flowers divert your attention, you mean? Yes, that's right. I just popped over to that flower bed over there. Well, I guess we better go over there, then. Just around the side of the building. Following Miss Layton's instincts, we started to carry out our investigation by retracing my steps. We relieved, relived everything that I had done that fateful morning up until the point when I was accused of stealing Dr. Ohm's work. So this is where the scent led you. Beautiful flowers. It's a marvelous display, isn't it? Such a lot of different varieties of rose. So, after you came down here to the flower bed, then what? Well, I stood and admired the flowers for a little while. Alright, so we'll do that. I see. You're really trying to get inside my head, aren't you? Become the suspect, as it were, so you can see how to prove my innocence. Not really, I just, I like flowers. Oh. They're very splendid. Every flower is in full bloom. They smell divine. Ernest, are you alright? We're staring at the flowers, not at me, remember? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't... I, I, mm, gosh. Well, I think we should investigate the area while we're here. That way we can enjoy the flowers a little longer. <laughs> hey, Cam's back. Found a hint coin. This is a rather rare variety. Actually, it's a real pig to grow. Oh, you know about flowers, do you? Is that your field? Nah, it's just a hobby. Actually, I know a rather fun puzzle about flowers. Do you know it? Ernest, trying to help you here. Some mysterious flowers are growing with petals that change color when you touch them. Each flower has five petals, and any petals that are connected by a strand are the same color. Each flower needs to have five different colors, not including white. Touch a petal to cycle through the different colors. Petals that have a color from the beginning cannot be changed. Okay. So... Change those.
Yes, you need to be red. You need to be green. Now you already have a blue. Oh, you can't be green then. Ugh. Okay, let's just start that over. Interesting one. Puzzles are made for solving. Mm, that's spot on, Miss Layden. I say you solved that very quickly, didn't you? I have a knack for puzzles. I haven't found one yet that I couldn't solve. Gosh, how wonderful. You don't believe me, do you? Not at all. I mean, I do believe you, of course. Well, anyway, they really are spectacular roses, aren't they? Definitely. You don't often see such a beautiful display. Someone has obviously worked very hard indeed to nurse them to their full glory. And we're enjoying them at just the right time. They're at their peak now. Just think, I could have missed this if I hadn't followed my nostrils. It must be my lucky day. Your lucky day? Aren't you forgetting that you've been accused of theft? You're a little odd, Ernest, aren't you? Odd? Miss? Am I? Oh. Ah, that presumably one of my fellow students over there. Him, he seems to be muttering to himself about something. Hmm, how did I mess up so badly? Three out of ten? Oh, what a rubbish score. Still, no one needs to know, and no one will. Not the way I dispose of my answer sheet. Really should study next time. He's sighing constantly. I wonder what the problem is. Yes, I wonder. Well, we've enjoyed some pretty flowers. Let's go back to retracing your steps. After the scent had drawn you here, you'd gazed at the flowers for a while. What'd you do next? Oh, well, I went a bit closer to the flowers and... Yes, and then... Careful. Sorry? Don't step any closer than that. It's dangerous. There's goat poo on the ground. Goat poo? Oh, that was close. I very nearly trod in it. Yes, I, I did tread in it earlier. Oh no. Oh yes. You are unlucky, aren't you? What's all this goat poo doing here anyway? Well, you see, they keep goats here on the campus. There's a little goat shed just a bit further on. You know your way around very well for someone on their first day. That's because after I'd trodden in the poo, I went looking for somewhere to wash off my shoe. I came across the goat shed then, you see. Ah, that's where you went next, is it? You really were determined not to actually go into the faculty building, weren't you? I'm... I'm a bad student? Well, come along then. Let's go over to the goat shed. My terrible bad luck had led me into a pile of goat poo. Was that really relevant to Miss Layton's investigation? I couldn't hide my doubts, but nevertheless, I took her on to the goat shed. Now 
Uh, I like how many video games have goats in them. It's so weird. Oh, the poor looking goat. Here we are. This is a goat shed. Oh yes, they really do have goats. Listen to them bleeding. They're adorable. Oh, hello. You're the fresher with the pooey shoe, aren't you? Did you manage to get it clean? Yes, thank you. You saved me a lot of embarrassment by letting me wash it off here. Hello, I'm Ketriel. You're responsible for looking after the goats, are you? Oh, hi there. I'm Billy. Yes, that's right. I mean, I'm a student at the university, but these goats are a part of my study. I'm researching goat behavior. Oh, so that's why you have goats on campus. Feels more like London Zoo than a London University just here, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really great, actually. You're welcome to hang out for a while if you like. It's a really good way to wind down. Thank you. There's something therapeutic about watching the animals going about their business. When I was washing off my shoe before, I found myself a little mesmerized, actually. I just stood and gazed at them for ages. Yes, I know what you mean. They somehow make all my thoughts of anything else vanish from your mind. Oh! What are we doing? We're supposed to be investigating the case. Oh gosh, yes, I forgot all about it. You've been leading me up the garden path since we got here, Ernest. If only we had someone or something to take the lead and stop us from going astray. Well, surely we can manage. Let's go back on track now and start tailing the Ernest of this morning. puzzle. Look who's laying up there at the top of the little tower. Ah, funny what goats like to climb, isn't it? Oh, I didn't mean the goat. There's a puzzle hiding up there. Do you see it? Really? How fascinating. Let's get ourselves distracted. Bad tempered sheep. Here we have nine sheep who really don't get along. If they find themselves within two squares of each other, vertically or horizontally, they start to fight. Luckily, they don't fight if they are diagonally from each other or separated by a rock. Can you place them all in positions they won't end up fighting? Slide them to move them, place them where you think they should be on the farm. Okay, that doesn't sound so difficult. Sheep Doku. <laughs> uh, if they find themselves within two squares. They don't fight if they're diagonally from each other or separated by a rock. Okay, well, I mean, we place you all in rock spaces. And then the rest are just diagonal. That should be fine. This is an interesting one. And that's how it's done. You did it. The atmosphere on the farm is nice and quiet, and the sheep look happy. Being near the rocks seems to relax them. Acquired the recipe for clam and persini chowder. It's very relaxing watching the goats here. They have such a calm and peaceful light life. I know, it's awfully easy to forget the time and find you've been here for hours. There's a cooking sub game, kind of. It's it's more of a restaurant sub game. It's um, you get different people and you who have different likes and dislikes, and you need to give them um, what is it like an entree, a a main course, um, a dessert. There's like a fourth thing as well, uh, and you need to have collected the rest the things that they like. Look at this one, Miss Layton. Such a sweetie. 
Oh, watch him. He'll eat absolutely anything he will. Really? Ah, I see. No one stole the research papers. The goats ate it. Thanks. Look, he just about to nibble my finger. I didn't think he'd go for human flesh. Ah, uh, don't worry. But he'll have the morning paper out of your hand if you let him get too close. Really, he eats paper. Actually, I think I've read that goats do that, yes. It's not really good for them, so I don't allow it. But some students think it's funny and feed it to them anyway. That or whoever stole the paper, uh, the papers fed it to the goats. On purpose, you mean? Yeah, if they do badly in a test, for example, they might feed their score sheets to them. I stop them if I'm here, but I can't be watching all the time. Gosh, what rotters. It looks like a lot of work caring for these goats. Yes, well, any living thing takes a lot of looking after. Oh, and there was this tricky situation a while ago as well. Let me tell you about it in puzzle format. The goat divide. As you can see in this picture, there is a 3x4 grid inside the fence. Each square within the grid can use one fence per side. What is the least amount of fences required to separate the goats from each other? The goats can go anywhere, but there cannot be more than one goat per square. Alright. This isn't the fast, so Irma should know the answers already. <laughs> There's a 3x4 grid beside the fence. Each square within the grid can use one fence per side. Alright. Are we to assume that there's only five goats? It's the least amount of fences required. Goats can go anywhere, but there's not to be more than one goat per square. So they all have to go inside, though. Because if we leave one out of the area, that's one less goat. Let's assume there's just the five. Because it says the goats can go anywhere, I really feel like we're only putting four goats inside there. separated probably so um, if we put the goats in the four corners then we would have to put fences no actually we wouldn't we wouldn't have to put a fence there I think the answer is six. Let's find out if I'm wrong. If you'll entertain my idea here. I'm wrong. I don't cut the mustard at all, do I? You know, it's don't all have to have the same size enclosures. Yes. No, I figured that part out. If all of them have to be in... Side. 
but then it could be eight. Um, what did this thing say? I mean, I am assuming that each area counts. Alright, so if that's the case, it's eight. Which if also you seems like my it's idea wrong. Here. No. I okay. don't cut the mustard at all, do I? Is like one fence when I do that. Because I would have assumed this counts as three fences, but does it count as one fence when I do that? Because if that's the case, and I'm right about not needing to put all of them in there, then the answer is three. If you'll entertain my idea here. Nope, okay. That wasn't right. Oh, fiddlesticks. fences as possible, so you need to make good use of the exterior fence, it's already there, duh. To use the fewest number of fences possible, you need to divide the area into both small and large. Okay, so nothing the same. The object here is to separate each goat from the others. Not all goats need to be enclosed within a fence. Uh-huh. Leave one goat outside of the fence. Yep, yeah, I knew that was going to be a thing. Separate the remaining four so that they each are in their own closure. Use the left or right of the large enclosure to fence off three individual vertical squares in a row. So... What you're saying is this. That's three goats. First answer was first answer was this. One of you doesn't count because you're staying out here. What last thing say? One go outside, separate the remaining four so that they are each in their own enclosure. 
left or right of the large I still think I just get like three in the end. do it in three, which means I think they actually want two as an answer. I don't know. Here, take this number. If you'll entertain my idea here, Miss Layton would never have got that wrong. You don't think that counts as three? which I'm pretty sure I put in as an answer or did I just no I think I did six as an answer now I can't remember it's close but you can do it in fewer That still gets me three. Also, I think that's probably wrong. my idea here. That's a relief. I wasn't entirely sure. I'm really mean to three of these goats. Really mean to three of these goats. Ah yes, seems like jolly hard work indeed. Goats eat a lot for their size, so you have to feed them regularly. Which means a lot comes out at the other end, if you know what I mean. A big job cleaning up all the big jobs. I see. Certainly need a good amount of care and attention, don't they? It's a lot of work, but the goats are really important to us. Not just as part of the research program, either. We use their manure as a fertilizer all over campus. Really, so those wonderful blooms are thanks to those little creatures. I would never have guessed. The goats come in useful and unexpected ways, I see. Yes, they do. They're very popular with the students, actually, and with the professors. Loads of students come here to see how they're getting on. And Dr. Ohm, you know the plant genetics guy? He likes to come, too. Oh, really? Dr. Ohm? Yeah, I think he finds it helps to clear his mind when he's been focusing hard on his research. So he finds it relaxing to watch the goats as just like we do? Adorable goats. Right, I think we've looked at the goats for long enough. So you'd been looking at the flowers, you trod in some goat poo, you came here to wash it off, and then you stayed and watched the goats for a while. What about after that? 
After that, I... Oh, yes, that's right, the cat. The cat? First a goat, and then a cat? Yes, I was about to head back to the faculty building when a cat jumped out across my path, so I ran after it. Don't tell me you were still wound up even after the flowers and goats so you wanted to stroke a furry feline to calm you down. No, I was worried that it might be lost, so I thought I should try and catch it and take it back to its owner. Oh, aren't you sweet? So, where did this cat chase take you? It ran back towards the roses, so I followed it there. Alright then, back to the flower bed. One of these days we might actually get to the scene of the crime. Miss Layton seems frustrated with my movements earlier that day, or apparently getting us nowhere fast. But in fact, an unforeseen turn of events was soon to lead us to the crime scene. Yes, this is where I followed the cat to. To these roses again. And you caught the cat here. Well, I did pick it up in my arms, but managed to wriggle free again. Obviously, flustered it, because it jumped straight through the open window inside the building. That one on the right. Oh, the right. Ah, there you mean. And did you go after it again? Well, I was worried it might damage something inside, so I climbed up to look through the window. But then I slipped and fell headlong inside myself. It's because of the beautiful roses growing right next to the windowsill. I was being so careful not to trample them. Got myself into a funny position and sort of made me go, oops, Daisy, right into the room. The room happens to be Dr. Ohm's laboratory. So you fell into Dr. Ohm's laboratory from the window. Is that about the size of it? Yes, exactly. It was simply an unfortunate accident that I ended up in there at all. Then, as I was rubbing my head after it had taken a knock, someone who I presume was a student came into the room. Cat immediately shot out of the open door and into the corridor before you could blink. No one else saw it. So when I told people I'd been chasing a cat, everyone thought I was lying. I see, and that's how you came to be a suspect. Yes, they thought I was a burglar, so then I had to be questioned by the police. Finally, then, we've reached the scene of the crime. I see how your movements this morning led you here now. Well, Miss Layden, do you think you can prove my innocence? All I think I can prove at the moment is that you're incredibly unlucky. Oh, I, I think everyone knows that already. But you have had one stroke of luck today. What's that? You met me. Don't worry, I'll work something out. Probably. Heh, <laughs> I hope you can, miss. Why don't we take a closer look at this window? This is the window, right? Yep, it was open a slither. Alright then, let's follow in your footsteps and squeeze in as well. Wait, we can't do that, Miss Layton. Why not? Because you can't just climb into rooms through windows. But if we're going to follow in your footsteps, we have to. Yes, I understand, but we could get into trouble. More trouble. The police might start saying that you're a thief as well. I suppose you have a point. What do you suggest? We go around and through the main entrance? That seems a bit dull. I think dull might be for the best, Miss, just this once. Following in my earlier footsteps, we'd finally arrived at the scene of the crime, after a lot of towing and froing. We would soon be in Dr. Ohm's laboratory, where the truth behind this case would be revealed, or so I had hoped. Hey, Markster! Oh, this place really hasn't changed at all. I've done it, Miss Layden. I've finally properly entered Gresson Hill University. Not through a window, but actually through the front door. I think it might be alone in your excitement about this, Ernest. Let's find our way to Dr. Ohm's laboratory. Time is of the essence. Oh, you two. Oh no, it's him again. Who's him again? Cat's mother? It's Inspector Hastings to you. Hello, Inspector. I think we just saw your cat, actually. Is that why you're here? Have you lost it? Huh? You're trying to be funny, miss. I'm investigating the case, as you very well know. Yes, of course. The case of Dr. Ohm's stolen research papers. Have you discovered any new information? No, we haven't gotten any new leads yet. We're just... Hey, hang on. Why am I telling you anything? Keep your nose out of police business. I thought I had you there for a moment. You think I'd fall for a cheap trick like that? You'll be lucky. Thought I told you to come back. 
go home back at the yard, didn't I? What are you doing here? We're also investigating the case. I thought I could prove Ernest was innocent. Oh, good luck with that. This lad here is his prime suspect. If I really didn't do it, there's no point keeping up with the pretense. Alm himself has made a statement saying he's sure you're the culprit. You're the only one who could have done it. Dr. Ohm, he thinks I'm guilty too. Anyway, the professor's lab is off limits, you hear? From now on, no one goes in there without permission. But Inspector, we won't be able to... Very well. Good, I'm glad we understand each other. Now clear off, you're getting under my feet. I suppose we just have to give up then. And Greaves, don't go off on any unannounced holidays, eh? We'll be wanting you down at the yard again before long. Could I just clarify something, Inspector? You said that people without permission weren't allowed into the laboratory, didn't you? So presumably, if you had permission, you'd be granted entry? Yes, obviously. The prime suspect and unrelated members of the public aren't gonna get it. I'm in charge here, so what I say goes. All very clear, thank you. Come along, Ernest. Where are we going, miss? Just follow me. Believe me, a single woman living alone in London doesn't let little things like this stop them. Oh, I'm alright then. I did say I'd trust you. I thought Inspector Hastings' appearance was going to put a stop to our investigation there and then. But Miss Layton wasn't giving up. She seemed to have a plan. I resolved again to put my faith in her, and followed as she walked. Where are we going, miss? We need to get permission to enter the lab. As it happens, I was coming here today to meet with someone who may be able to help us in that regard. I'm sure he'll say we're allowed in. Really? But I thought Inspector Hastings was in charge. The problem is where to find him. Perhaps we should ask that detective over there if we see him. Uh, okay. Excuse me, uh, could I ask you something? I wonder if you've seen Dean Demol nah, around anywhere. The Dean? Oh, uh, let's see. I was also looking for him. I wanted to ask him some questions. Uh, he's off campus. Oh dear, off campus. Do you know where he's gone? Scotland Yard, as far as I know. Oh, but we just saw the inspector inside. They obviously missed each other. Uh, I'll just note that down. Looks like we'll have to head back to Scotland Yard ourselves, then. We have to find the Dean. So that's who you wanted to talk to about gaining entry. Yes, I need to discuss some things with him. Gosh, I can't believe you know the Dean, Miss Layton. That's amazing. He's been the head of Gress Heller University for donkey's years. He must be one of the most famous people in London. Actually, it's my father who knows the Dean, really, not me. Your father? I'll explain some other time. For now, we must hurry back to Scotland Yard. Oh, yes, you're quite right. We don't want to end up passing each other as well. Nope. Let's get a move on. Together, we hurried back to Scotland Yard. I was still rather bemused by Miss Layton's acquaintance with the Dean. How did this young detective woman come to know one of the country's most preeminent scholars? Let's see, so we're gonna go back to the bike. Now then, where is he? Ah, there he is, over there. Ah, uh, yes, it really is him. Have you ever met him before, Ernest? No, never. At the welcoming ceremony, he was just a little dot up on the stage, at the front of the hall. Gosh, my palms are sweating. I mean, I'm really about to meet the most important person in the whole of Gress and Heller. No time for nerves. Come along. Hello, Dean. Been a long time, hasn't it? Catriel, Catriel Layton. Well, bless my cotton socks. It most certainly has been a long time. How are you, my girl? Oh, very well, thank you. You haven't changed at all. Ah, uh, tell me, how's your father? I haven't seen him in a while, actually. No, he's gone missing. What? Missing? Yes, they're looking into it here at Scotland Yard as it happens, but nothing yet. Wow, we are very unconcerned about this, aren't we? That's actually why I wanted to see you. Do you know where he might have gone? 
I have absolutely no idea. Terribly sorry. I wish I could have been more helpful. Still, wouldn't worry about old Herschel. Wherever he is, I'm sure he's perfectly fine. No doubt he'll show up soon enough as if nothing had happened. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure you're right. Dad does do that often, it seems. You know, I'm glad I bumped into you. My granddaughter has just sent me another puzzle in the post. I can't for the life of me see how to solve it. Mind having a look? Yeah, the, the wig animation on that is great. The professor has written a sum on the board, but it doesn't make any sense. It can apparently be fixed by adding a curved line in one location, but which curved line is the right one? Bear in mind that there is no need to rotate the line. You use it just how it is already displayed. So, if I add a curved, a curvy line in one location, I can fix this thing. Okay, well, God, I wish it would show me the options. Uh, it doesn't say that they can't overlap, does it? Just that I have to add a curvy line. Minus four is ninety six. <laughs> Hundred minus four is infinity. Yeah, I mean, if I if I put a, a curved line over the equals, I could say 100 minus 4 doesn't equal infinity. That's probably not the answer. It's just one curved line. Um... And they're not to be, they're not to be rotated. I don't think it's the, either like the U or the N looking one. Grab Visualizing puzzles are the worst for me. <laughs> um. 
Honestly, two answers are valid, but the game will only want one of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've done similar shapes, which means you can probably fudge it. Um... I honestly don't know. I know it's trying to trick me into thinking a thing. Adding a curvy line in one location. Yeah, I'm gonna read hints. Try working on a section of the sum where the figures look wrong. Which part looks strange? Okay, I think you're telling me to look at the zeros. Place one curvy line on the right hand. You need to place the curvy line on the right hand side of the sum in order where the answer is. What do you need to add to the answer to make the sum correct? I get what you're saying, but I don't quite get what shape that would work with. <laughs> yes, no, I understood that the two circles are part of a number. The left hand side of the sum as it is, and change the right hand to reflect the answer. I don't have to do anything to the left, huh? It's alright. I'm still not this quite. Do it, I think. Nope. What's the okay. matter with me today? Yes. But I figured I'd put the thing over and make it a six. Because you said I didn't need to change the other number. to solve this now. What's the matter with me today? This is gonna be real stupid once I figure it out. Is an interesting one. Yeah. Puzzle That's what was going with with the other one. Which totally would work fine. Game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Game's being dumb. The other line works fine for that. Uh, of course, that's how it's done. Well, thank you, Catriel. I won't have to disappoint my little angel now. What a relief. Glad to have been of assistance. Now 
actually came down here to Scotland Yard to meet with Inspector Hastings. Can't find the man anywhere. Oh, well that's because he's actually at the university. Oh, you mean we just meet just each other? How irritating. I hear there's been an incident on campus. A theft? Yes, a nasty business. That's what I'd come to talk to the inspector about. I'd like to ask for your permission to investigate the case myself. You, Catriel? Yes, I'll get to the bottom of it. But the police are already well underway with their own investigation. I'm aware of that, but I think perhaps a different perspective might be called for. I may be able to see things in a way the police can't. Hmm. Well, alright then, I can't really see any harm in it. If you're your father's crime-solving skills, no doubt you'll see to the heart of the matter in an instant. Oh, thank you. So, you'll permit us into Dr. Ohm's laboratory, I presume, to see no the crime. Ah, oh, yes, yes, of course. You're free reign over the entire university for this. Wonderful. In that case, we'll be getting straight down to business. Good luck. I'd like this cleared up as soon as possible. The reputation of the university will suffer if it drags on. Oh, that was... Beezer, double Beezer. You were chatting with the dean as if you were old friends. And more importantly, he's given us permission, permission we need to investigate the laboratory. Ah, yes. Inspector Hastings won't be able to turn us away now. No, he won't. So let's go back there and rub it, his extra large nose in it. So we managed to obtain the permission we needed to enter Dr. Ohm's laboratory and investigate. I was as perplexed as ever by Miss Layton, especially after the familiar tone she seemed to have adopted with the dean. Detective's not going to be happy about that. Alright, here we are. Dr. Ohm's laboratory, just up ahead. Oh, I wonder if Dr. Ohm gave his research papers to, um, goats, because they were bad for some reason. Do you want anyone to know? Yeah, I can see this. Oh, look, there he is. Inspector Hastings. Not you two again. Had just about enough of your sauce, alright? Not coming in here, and that's final. Actually, we got permission from the... I'm sorry, I need to do this preferably. Well, actually, we have permission to investigate the laboratory now. In fact, we have permission to do whatever we want. Come on, you think I was born yesterday? Who gave you this permission? Because it certainly wasn't me. Dean Delmona authorized it. The Dean? Presumably you're not going to flout his authority. I don't. Dean Delmona said it alright. Fine, go in. Thank you. Come on. Oh, do excuse us. I don't know what the Dean's playing at, letting you clowns investigate. It's highly irregular. Even Inspector Hastings was powerless to stop us now that we had the Dean's permission. I don't think it works that way ever, but you know. I waited with bated breath to see what miraculous deductions Miss Layton could make at the scene of the crime. This is it, miss. The research laboratory of the highly regarded Dr. Genome. Isn't it exciting? So this is where the incident took place. And you got in here through the window? That's right. This was the window I was peering through. And I slipped and fell inside. I mentioned that, right? Yes. And that's presumably Dr. Ohm over there? According to Inspector Hastings, he's accused you of a crime. Gosh, I idolize the man, but he thinks I'm a criminal. Well, we should start by interviewing him. Excuse me, Dr. Ohm. Mm, who are you? I'm Catriel Layton. Dean Delmona had given us permission to investigate the theft of your research papers. That's a disgrace, I tell you, and... Wait, you're the young chap who took them. No, I assure you, Professor, I've been wrongly accused. I didn't do it. What are you even doing here? Didn't they take you back to Scotland Yard? They did, but they had to let me go because they didn't have evidence to hold me. Clearly, Ernest here was acting suspiciously and did enter the laboratory through a window, but he's not the culprit. I intend to clear Ernest's name by finding the true thief and bringing him or her to justice. 
We'll need to make a thorough search of this laboratory in order to gather supporting evidence. I don't know what you think you'll be able to find, but if the Dean's giving you his permission, I can't stop you. Be my guest. Just don't upset any of my experiments. Thanks. We'll try not to take too much of your time. Let's see. We should look by the window. There's a fine view of the rose bed. Ah, you've noticed the roses, have you? Oh, they're simply spiffing. Aren't they? I often stop and gaze out at the window. Who tends to the flowers? I don't really know, to be honest. I hear some of the students manage the gardening around here. Gosh, that's very impressive. Flowers like that take an awful lot of looking after. Yes, I should be thankful to the students, I suppose. Whenever I get a little fed up with my progress, I find those beautiful roses often cheer me up. So the view from your window helps you when you're writing papers, you mean? Hmm, view from the window. Oh, so close. Unless we could talk to you. Do you mind if I ask you one or two questions? Ah, uh, fine. Tell me, why is it that you've accused Ernest of stealing your papers? Crying out loud, he was seen climbing in through the window. You don't need to be Einstein to figure it out. I'm sorry, you're mistaken. That's right, miss. You set him straight. Ernest has admitted entering the room through the window, but he didn't climb in. He fell in with an oops-a-daisy. Uh, I don't think that's really relevant, miss. Oh, really? But you kept mentioning it. Look, I was in here just before you snuck through the window. All of my papers were accounted for then. I had an appointment, so I left the laboratory, but I made sure I locked the door on my way out. But then, just as you broke in, one of my students came and let himself in here with a spare key. He saw you in here, for goodness sakes. And when I got back, the papers I'd left on my desk were gone. They can't have just disappeared into thin air, can they? Who else could be responsible but you? I don't know, but... Just a moment. You said that you locked the door when you left the room. What about the window? Didn't you lock that? Oh, I remember now. I actually saw Dr. Omo opening the window while I was standing and admiring the roses outside. The same window that the cat jumped in. <sighs> I don't remember. I intended to lock the window too, but... But the point is you don't expect people to sneak in through windows. The fact that you did that proves you were up to no good. Dr. Omo, I wish you'd believe me. I don't think there's anything you could say to him at the moment that would change his mind, Ernest. We'll just have to find irrevocable proof. I suppose so. Item? Oh, that's a, um, oh, they've called it a vicious veg, but that's a, what is that thing? It's a shrieking thing. It makes a really loud noise and you really shouldn't pull it out of the ground. Oh, I can't remember what the name of that is. It's shown up in so many anime for me, though. Mandrake! Yes! Thank you. This is Dr. Ohm's research equipment. I'm sure it's the very best. Probably rather expensive. I suppose he even drops things when he's conducting experiments. Chemicals and things, I mean. I'm afraid that does happen. Like this time about a puzzle something. Here, I just brought out a puzzle. Don't worry about it. Precious medicine. A valuable bottle of medicine has slipped out of the boy's hands. Try to limit the damage by placing one piece of wood so that as little medicine spills on the floor as possible. Where would be the best place to position the wood? Slide it to move it and touch it to rotate. Huh. Alright. That we could get that in. <laughs> I 
That's not gonna be the answer, right? Like, that would be dumb, right? If I just capped the bottle. Like, I support your decision. I like the answer. I don't think it's right. That would be dumb. Probably is the answer. I think it's not, but I let's... I have a feeling that perhaps... <sighs> Still no patch on this Layton, of course. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Always, always check the dumbest answer first. Right. If the bottle was sealed at the start, then no medicine would spill, which is super important to catching everything if you're gonna carry things. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hey, game. I saw you. Oh, so I'm glad I managed to stop that substance going all over the floor, whatever it was. I hope I can work with Dr. Ohm one day. Proving you didn't steal his research data will be rather pivotal in realizing that wish, I think. Yes, of course. Rome's death is an uh, enviably tidy. Far cry from a certain other professor, that's for sure. Certain other? Sorry? Ah, never mind. It's just that you generally think of academics as being too engrossed in their work to care about keeping their things in order. Excuse me. I don't know what other academics you know, but I thank you not to tar me with the same brush. Oh, sorry, I didn't think you could hear me. I'm clean and tidy by nature. I can't relax unless I have everything in order. It's really very simple. You put things away after you've finished using them and you put rubbish in the bin. When you finish with documents, you dispose of them promptly. Can't write a coherent paper about anything if you're surrounded by mess. That's what I believe anyway. That's why I always keep things neat and tidy. I see. So that's how the great professor works. Fascinating. Hmm. Well, now that I've had a look around the laboratory... Oh, have you managed to find the evidence we need? I find that your actions are more and more suspicious, Ernest. Oh no. Not really. I was just pulling your leg. Gosh, you nearly fainted. Still, I can't find anything that proves your innocence. For the time being, you're still, you'll are still you still be considered a suspect, I'm afraid. We need to find something that points to the true culprit. Just something. This is a real problem, this is. Dr. Ohm, what's wrong? I've been trying to carry on with this paper despite my important documents having been stolen. But without them to refer, refer to, I'm lost. Can't make head nor tail of what's written here. Oh dear, would you let me have a look? You, but you're the thief! Ah, well, why not? The way things are, it couldn't get any worse. This is what's giving me trouble, you see? It's a strange puzzle I've written down. Those important documents you stole were the answer. Letters on the left have been transformed into symbols on the right. Using the same rule, what symbol would the bottom letter turn into? Alright, well... We could take it that the V is just turned upside down. Which means this one. If you'll entertain my idea here. Still no patch on this Layton, of course. Or that. Or they're mirrored. Yeah, that's absolutely... Just cut, cut them and swap them. That was not what I was doing, but sure, why not? You know, that works too. Ah, yes, that makes sense now. Did you say your name was again? Ernest Greaves, was it? Very impressive. If you weren't a thief, you'd have a promising future ahead. I do wish you'd believe me, Professor. I really didn't steal anything. Ah, uh, it doesn't make any difference who did it now. Tomorrow's the deadline for the paper submission, anyway. Tomorrow? Oh, godly, that is a pickle. 
you're telling me. I must do to finish it off today. But that was before my documents were pinched. It's no use. Without the data, I can't write another word. The whole world is watching, waiting to see what I publish next. <laughs> the map loops. You're right, I forgot. The map loops. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to satisfy their thirst for my knowledge this time. Oh dear, what a mess. It's beyond my control, though. Now that my documents are gone, blame the scoundrel that stole them. Mm. You won't meet the submission deadline. Yes, it's beyond your control. Are you all right, miss? I wonder. I think I know my why. I know why the documents went missing. Yes, the professor did. Miss Layton was still deep in thought, but I could see the truth of the case was bubbling up inside her. Yeah, he just got... He, he was just unlucky. If it hadn't been... If it hadn't been him, the student who came in with the spare key would have gotten... Gotten the blame. I've got it. I know exactly what happened. Really? You mean, you can prove that I didn't do it? Yes, Ernest. You're off the hook. This mystery is history. Who took the professor's documents, then? I'll explain everything later. First, go fetch Inspector Hastings. What? Me? Yes, you. Who else could go? Run along now, Ernest. Chop, chop. Okay. Leaving now. Hey, G-Dwarf. We can put the puzzle of your missing documents to bed now. That mystery is history. Really? They are there! Uh, hey. But... I don't... Please move. The roses... What on earth does this business have to do with that bed of roses? That's the result of your research. What are you talking about? I research genetically engineered plants. Those are just ordinary run-of-the-mill flowers of the genus Rosa. What possible connection could they have to my work? You hit a brick wall with your research. With the presentation of your paper fast approaching, you needed to buy yourself some time, so you arranged for your documents to be stolen. Who planted that idea in your head? Of course, it left you with the problem of disposing of reams and reams of paper. And then you realized you could feed it to the goats the university keeps, whose droppings are used as manure for those roses. You're kidding! So those roses are the fruits of your labor. Haven't they bloomed beautifully? You must be delighted. <sighs> In other words, Ernest here is innocent. So, Ernest, I'll leave you to take it from here. Miss Layton, you are magnificent. And that was how I could never get rid of Ernest ever again. It's over. All that research and for what? I've absolutely nothing to show for any of it. Yeah, and now you're gonna get in trouble for for causing a police investigation when there wasn't supposed to be one. Or, I guess rather, you're not, because it's that kind of game. It doesn't have to be over, Professor. Why don't you start again? I'd gladly help you. Ernest, you... You mean you can forgive me? Wait. After everything I've Ernest, done... Ernest, if you're gonna help him, then why are you still with me? I've watched you conducting your research for a long time now. I know better than anyone what an exceptional man you are. I'm quite sure you'll succeed given enough time. So let's start again. Working together. Well, Ernest, you're exceptional yourself. Thank you. It's Miss Layton we should be thanking. Both of us. I must think of some way to no, repay her. No, no, don't. Just, just don't repay me at all. Leave me alone forever. No! And that was the moment I realized. I realized what a deep respect I had for Miss Layton. What complete faith I had in her abilities. 
and how I truly felt about her. Okay, I mean, we're done for the day, but I want to go see what that new case is. Because clearly, I'm no suspect. Chancellor Lane is buzzing. There's been a murder! Whoa, really? An actual murder this time? Not the maybe murder? Wow. Are we allowed to have real murders in this game? Are we allowed that? I don't know. Alright, well that's all we're doing today. We've got, I believe, I looked this up and there's 12 cases total, so we've got two more cases to get through before we finish this game. And then, uh... <laughs> we could end up in prison. <laughs> for from Ernest. <laughs> uh... Alright. Thank you for that cheery block. I hope you have a good day as well. Um, yeah, so tomorrow's stream is Tuesday. It'll be in the evening. Um, 8 p.m. We're still doing Paper Mario for that. Fickle Muse, thank you for that cheer. And uh, let's see. I do kind of want to start Pokemon right away, but I want to finish the game first. Which. Ah, yes. Ben is playing that Pokemon, that new Pokemon. Uh, yeah. Which one? I'm assuming he got Eevee. He better not have disappointed. If I get right over there and he's gotten Pikachu, I'm gonna be mad at him. That's not true. I wouldn't be really mad at him. He did get Eevee? Good. He got the good one. Um, yeah, we'll go down. We'll go raid Ben. Um, uh, tomorrow... Um, ben and I are actually also streaming Pokemon for New Day Tuesday, which we're going to be starting over on. So his playthrough will be different than, than the one we do together. I'm going to be playing Pokemon later this week once I finish up one of these games, which, you know, that playthrough will be different uh, as well, I'm sure. No, I would not ins insert slight miscuts into his edits as punishment, because that's just punishing the viewer. That's not punishing Ben. <sighs> oh. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, the thing this week is Thursday stream will have to be in the evening. Just because I, um, I've got some stuff going on that morning. Which means we don't play this game again till. Hmm. I have to figure this out. I might still play this game Thursday evening just to finish it off, I think. Normally, when I change the stream times like that, I prefer to um, change the game to our Saturday game. But. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll still play this game Thursday evening just so we can finish it up so I can uh, start playing Pokemon in the mornings. Uh, then, because when, when we're done Paper Mario, I have another game uh, ready for that. Anyway, I'm going to take us going offline, uh, and then uh, we'll go raid Ben. We'll say hi to him. Uh, we'll see what he's been naming his Pokemons. There's a screen I have to hit for this. It's this one. Take care, everyone.